Hi everyone, um, welcome back to the Civ Rays InMove. We're going to switch things up a little bit this time. I'm going to take a break from the um, hands and arms that we've been working on. Um, I know we haven't quite finished the hand and arms, but we'll come back to those at some point in the future. I thought I'd just have a change and start looking at the stomach assembly. What we're going to be doing today is working on the top stomach assembly. Um, we're just going to get it up to the stage you can see here in front of you now. Uh, we're not going to go too far with it. I'm just going to take a few videos to cover the stomach, so we'll do this in stages. Um, if you keep watching to the end of the video, I'll show you this stomach assembly working as far as we've got it here, just with these two servos installed. Okay, so let's get into how we put this thing together. So our first task is to um, attach these four pieces by making these dovetail joints fit. So what I'll do is I'll just clean up these parts a little bit and file out these joints. See if we can get some of this to start fitting together. So I've got the first joint to fit in here. I had to file this out quite a bit. Um, it was very tight. I actually uh, hit it with a hammer to, to get that to go together. Um, I did also apply a little bit of heat with the heat gun. I just wanted to make sure things just weren't brittle. Um, not really a lot of heat, just just a very gentle amount of heat. I didn't want to melt the parts, but I just also didn't want them to crack while I was hammering them. Um, these joints are quite thick, so they do have to be a pretty good fit to get them to go together. Um, so I'll just continue around on the other joints. I think there's um, some screws that we put in here as well. Um, they just sort of reinforce, they go across here. They sort of just reinforce the front bits to the back bits, um, but there aren't screws to screw the two sides together. It's just front to back. So I've now got uh, two of these parts together, the front and backs joined together. So that just leaves us to get the uh, two sides to fit together now. Um, I think I did force these a little bit. Uh, this edge here is not quite flat because I think this, this piece has been forced out a little bit so it's not quite flush here. I don't know if that will give us any issues later on but if it does I'd imagine we can just file this down a little bit smooth that off. I'm not sure how accurate the hole is going to be the large round circle in the middle on these joints here. It just feels like there's a little bit of a lip there. Um, and that's probably just because we haven't got this terribly accurate on this joint. Hopefully it'll uh, be okay. So that's the two halves. So the next bit is to get these two halves to fit together. Um, I think that's going to be a little bit more tricky because the more dovetail joints you have to work on at any one time um, just makes it a little bit more difficult. You have to get, in this case, all four lining up, fitting together nicely before they'll actually join. So I've got all of these joints in here now, so this is all now one piece. Uh, it's nice and flat on the bottom. Um, I haven't put these screws in yet. Uh, we've got two screw holes here and here where we can run screws down the inside and they'll, they'll run across here to reinforce these two joints. So I don't think they're really required but I will put them in just to be on the safe side. Um, after I've got those screws in the next thing will be to try and fit these uh, servo holders servo holsters I think they're called um, and these two back brackets will hold them in place so I'll get those screws in first and then we'll take a look at uh, these other parts so here we've got two of the HS805 BB servos we're going to be modifying both of these, um, but we're going to be modifying them slightly differently. 
we're going to um, drive both servos off of one controller board so one of the servos will actually have its potentiometer and servo board removed and uh, put to one side we can use those for spares um, and the other one will have its um, controller board controlling both servos I got these from uh, Model Shop Leeds in the UK if you're in the UK and you're interested um, they cost about £30 their prices do vary slightly but they're usually about £30 each so we'll open these up and take a look inside so we undo the uh, six screws on the back just remove this cover that gives us access to the circuit board the next step is a little tricky we have to get this circuit board off um, and to do that we need to desolder it from the motor um, the motor connections are here and here we also have to desolder this third connection here if we can get the solder off of all three of those connections then this board will lift out so these two here aren't too bad to remove the solder from that comes off quite quite easily but this one's particularly tricky you have to apply quite a bit more heat to that one if you get the solder off these two first you can kind of get your screwdriver under the board and then as you apply a bit of heat to the last one you can you can lift it off so that board's off there now um, that then gives us access to the potentiometer which is down in here so if we just remove the screw we can get the potentiometer out there we go that's out so i think we'll move on to the next one and we'll we'll use this as the slave servo that doesn't have a controller board so we can put this assembly to one side you can just use that as spares i think i've already burnt out one of these on my shoulder joint so this is going to come in handy as a spare so same process again Try and heat up these three joints. So I just try and get the solder flowing a bit first. See, for some reason this one takes a little bit more heat. It does go, it is now soft. So I use a little bit of solder wick to try and wick some of the solder away. This is a little messy. So if we get it flowing and then put the wick into it. I guess ideally what you would have here is like a desoldering pump. Uh, I don't have one, so I'm just kind of making the best of this. It's very 
that one was a lot more difficult than the first one so that's the second one off so we can again get the potentiometer out um, So what we want to do now is reinstall um, one of the boards, um, but we want to get rid of the potentiometer first. I'm going to cut this grommet off here. Um, I have done a couple in the past where I've kept the grommet, but I'm just going to get that out of the way. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend these three wires so that we can take them out along with these ones and mount that potentiometer remotely. Going to put a little bit of heat shrink tubing on them to insulate them. Just don't want them touching, otherwise we'll get erratic behaviour. Could end up damaging something. Before I reinstall the circuit board back in, I'm just going to open up this little um, notch here because so we've got a few more wires coming out so we need a little bit bigger hole. So 
So I'm just putting some uh, braided sleeving on this just to keep everything tidy. So what I've done, I've just put a little bit of black insulation tape around the um, braided sleeving. And I've taken two extra wires down here, these pink and yellow wires. Not ideal colours, but it's the only thing I had in a, a little bit heavier gauge wire. What we're going to do with these is after we've soldered the um, board back in place, I'm going to solder these two wires across the motor so that we can take the motor connections out and we can take those out and connect them up to the other motor. So both motors will be driven from one controller board. So I'm going to try and get that back in there now. There we go, that's in there. Fortunately one of my wires is a bit... I would ideally like this um, insulation tape to actually have gone inside but it just isn't the room so I'll just try and push it up as tight as I can so we should be able to solder that back on now Then the final thing on this side is to connect these two wires onto here, onto this motor. Just soldering in the world, but it's all very fiddly. Okay, it should do. Hoping that we've kind of got enough room on the cover to accommodate these wires on top. Um, not quite sure how other people do this. The pictures I've seen show the wires going underneath the circuit board, but there's actually nowhere to take them down unless people are cutting the circuit board out a little bit or drilling some holes somewhere. Um, kind of hoping the cover will go back on. It does look like these wires are a little bit too thick. I'm just going to pop this off. Gives us access to the gears. See the uh, bearing has come out there. Should be okay. It's kind of in our way. Um, here we go. 
Put that back in. Just going to snip off this lug. There it goes. Be careful it doesn't hit you in the face. Um, doesn't normally come out that bearing, it normally sits in there. Should be okay. Then we can just pop the screws on, close this back up. Okay, so when I was looking through the um, InMove instructions on how you modify these servos, it's quite daunting for me because these are quite expensive. They're, as I said earlier, £30 each, and you obviously invalidate your warranty when you start modifying them like this. Um, I was a little nervous that it looked like a difficult job. I wasn't sure if I was capable of doing it what kind of mess I would make but I've done a few of them now and I think you kind of just you do get a little bit better with practice at this and I don't know how easy I made that look but it wasn't super difficult but hopefully um, having a video of somebody doing it will give you a little bit more confidence to have a go at it yourself There, I think that basically worked out how I wanted it. Um, this is probably a little bit fragile here, so if we flex this too much, it's probably going to come out and start to expose the wires. But if we're a little bit gentle with it, we should be okay. So that's the first one modified and put back together. Um, the wires we've got coming out of the end, we've got the normal servo connection. So then we've got the red, green, and yellow wires here for the potentiometer. Um, there are two yellows here, but it's the thinner gauge yellow, which goes to the potentiometer. And then I've got these slightly heavier gauge wires, pink and yellow, which need to go to the other servo motor. So this one's going to be a lot simpler because all we need to do is to connect up the motor wires. We've got no controller board and we've got no um, well essentially the potentiometer is not there either. The only thing we have to make sure about is we need to get these um, the same way around as we did on the first one. So the boat motors will both spin in the same direction. So I believe the yellow one went on this side. It's a little fiddly so this might not be very neat. Do my best. There we go. So we're not going to have to um, remove as much on this one, if anything at all. We've just got these two wires coming out. Would still like the um, same idea with the braiding on it. But I'm going to go with a 
um, a thinner braiding on this one. So we've got less wires. Don't really need it, but I will still put a little bit of insulation tape around this. Okay, it doesn't have to be super neat. We're going to put a cover over that. We're not going to see that. So before we put the cover back on, we need to modify the gearing so we can just prise this piece off. We can actually get to the gears. And what we have to do is remove this uh, stop here this lump of plastic here has to come out so that we can get um, continuous rotation on these servos I just cut it off with these uh, snips just literally snipped down that way and then snipped across the bottom and it just pops straight off I'm hoping that's going to be okay the way I've done it before is to cut it off with a Dremel, but you have to be so careful not to damage the gears and you get dust everywhere. It's not ideal. It's a small gasket that goes over the around the outside. So I've just carefully put that gasket back around there. Now pop this back on. Okay, now we can close it up. There we go, two servos modified, ready to be installed. So I've cleaned up the first um, back piece, back bracket that goes in here, and the first servo holster. This is quite a tight fit down in here. It does go in if I kind of force it. I have to just file around all the edges on the on the bottom piece of this that will fit in there it is a very tight fit um, but what I'm having a little bit more difficulty with is these pieces are obviously removable so that you can get the servo holster in in here and then fit this back bracket on but that sounds easier than it actually is in practice because if you look here it sort of has to tip in at an angle um, and then you've got to kind of try and get this block down in that groove which is quite difficult um, I'm gonna to have to see if I can kind of force that down in there but I thought I'd just show you that because it's quite a tricky part of the assembly. Okay, I did manage to get it in there. It wasn't too difficult. I did it off camera, so I'm going to try and show you on the next one how I did that. So this is the second servo holster I need to fit. I'll just show you on this one what I did on the first one. We have to remove this support material here um, and on this side. comes off quite easily. Um, 
I then cleaned up all around the edges um, which were the bottom of the print as it came off the print bed and then you also have to remove these little bits of support material that are down in these holes so I'll just clean this one up and then we'll get that installed You don't have to do too much cleaning up, um, just make the parts a little bit smoother. The main thing is to get the lip off the bottom. Again, I don't think it really interferes with anything, you just really want to clean it up, make it look nice. I did just uh, very gently go around uh, the circle part. It does fit quite loosely so we don't really need to take much material off, I'm just kind of smoothing it off just a little bit, hopefully make it run a little bit smoother. So if we put this uh, back bracket on upside down, and we can actually rotate it down into the hole. You might want to just encourage the last little bit with a very light tap of the hammer. You see the, the last bit we need to get in is this bit here. I don't really want to hit it with a hammer, but there we go, in it goes. I don't think you need the hammer. Um, there. So that's how you do that. So we've now got the two servo holsters in there, and they can rotate. I think they kind of rotate in the same direction. One tips one way, one tips the other way. This is a common problem we've seen a lot with these servo holsters. Um, you have to tip them in at an angle to get the um, wires through out of this slot. These servos only really go in if you um, push them straight down square. So ideally they would they would want to go straight down like that. It would fit in there perfectly but of course we've got this cable here so we can't. We have to go in at an angle. Um, which I think is going to be a problem. Um, what I've done before is uh, just chamfer off this edge here uh, to allow that servo to just tip down. So it's, it's only just very slightly that it won't go in. I've, I've got that in there now. I just chamfered that off a little bit and managed to drop that in there. Cable coming out of this edge. But now that you've actually got the servo in there, it sticks out the bottom a little bit. You've got even less movement on these now. So they, they come a long way outwards, but they, they move barely nothing. Um, 
tipping inwards so I'm kind of hoping that that is fine seem a little strange though but I'll carry on that's the slave servo in actually got that in without filing um, without chamfering off this edge and I think because it's got a, a thinner cable it flexed a bit more and was able to drop down there okay so the next thing is to just screw these in here Both servos fitted. So we want to connect up the the two motors together. So that's our uh, yellow and pink wires. So I'll have to find a little terminal block to attach them together. I'm not sure what I've got. We might have to improv improvise. Okay, so I'm just going to use a little terminal block to connect these up. So they're just connected together like that. It's just connecting the two motors together. That's kind of semi-temporary, but... So then the next thing we want to do just to try this out is we want to reconnect our potentiometer. So what I might do just as a temporary solution is just resolder it back on exactly the way it came off. So I've hooked this up to an Arduino. Um, the Arduino is outputting a signal to command the servos to their center position which is 90 degrees. On the potentiometer um, so if I rota rotate the potentiometer one way you should see the servos rotate one way the more I turn it the faster they get I turn it back to the center position so I'll slow down and they should stop in the center position and if I continue turning it the opposite way the servos will turn the opposite way you should notice that both servos are both spinning in the same direction. I believe that's correct. Okay everyone, that's as far as we're going to go for now. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, please give it a like and hopefully a share. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Um, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time where we'll continue to work on this top stomach assembly.